few topics ignite as much passion and debate as the nature of Jesus Christ. His life and teachings continue to resonate, inspiring countless individuals and shaping civilizations. Join us as we delve into the heart of this enduring question, is Jesus God, as Christians profess, or a revered prophet, as Muslims believe? We've brought together two esteemed individuals, each representing their respective faiths, to engage in a respectful and insightful dialogue. Their perspectives, grounded in years of study and reflection, promise to shed light on this enduring debate and foster a deeper understanding of these two world religions. Our journey begins with a pivotal question. Does the Bible explicitly state that Jesus is God? Christian debater, yes, numerous passages affirm Jesus' divinity. John chapter 1 verse 1 proclaims, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Muslim debater, interpreting John chapter 1 verse 1 as a definitive declaration of Jesus' divinity, requires careful consideration of the context and language. Understanding it within the framework of the entire Bible, rather than isolating verses, is crucial for a holistic understanding. The concept of the Trinity, a cornerstone of Christian belief, also lies at the heart of this debate. Christian debater, the Trinity, while not explicitly named, is deeply rooted in Scripture, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 commanding baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit reveals a triune understanding of God. Muslim debate at the absence of the term Trinity within the Bible raises questions about its authenticity as a divine revelation. This concept isn't a later invention but a theological interpretation drawn from numerous biblical passages referencing the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Another point of contention revolves around Jesus' prayers to the Father. Christian debater Jesus' prayers beautifully illustrate his dual nature, fully God and fully man. During his earthly ministry, he chose to experience the human condition, including dependence on the Father. His prayers weren't a sign of inferiority, but a testament to his obedience and submission to the Father's will. Muslim debater. The act of prayer is inherently an act of worship and submission to a higher power. God, being self-sufficient and supreme, does not pray to himself. John 10, 30 presents another intriguing passage where Jesus states, I and the Father are one. Christian debater John 10, 30 eloquently captures the essence of the Trinity, the profound unity and oneness between Jesus and the Father. This unity, however, doesn't negate their distinct personhoods. Muslim debater. While we acknowledge the close relationship between Jesus and God, understanding this verse as a declaration of ontological unity contradicts the Islamic principle of Tawhid. Imagine a triangle, three distinct points, yet unified as one shape. Similarly, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one God, yet exist as distinct persons within that unity. The Holy Spirit, often referred to as the third person of the Trinity, presents another theological crux. Christian debater, the Holy Spirit, co-equal and co-eternal with the Father and the Son, is the third person of the Trinity. He is not merely a force or an attribute, but a distinct person, possessing intellect, will and emotions. Muslim debater, we revere the Holy Spirit, often identified with the angel Gabriel as a powerful manifestation of God's will and a conduit for divine revelation. Just as Jesus comforted and guided his disciples, the Holy Spirit continues that work today, empowering, comforting and guiding believers. Jesus in John 14, 28 states, The Father is greater than I. Christian debater, this verse, often misunderstood, doesn't contradict Jesus' divinity. It reflects the dynamic within the Trinity during his earthly ministry. Think of a loving father and son. The father, due to his experience and role, might hold a position of authority, yet both share the same essence. They are both fully human. Similarly, Jesus, while equal in essence to the Father, voluntarily submitted to the Father's will during his incarnation. This submission doesn't imply inferiority, but a functional subordination during his earthly mission.
Critics of the Trinity often cite verses like Deuteronomy 6.4, the Shema, which proclaims, The Lord our God, the Lord is one, and 1 Corinthians 8.6, Yet for us there is but one God, the Father. Christian debater, these verses beautifully affirm the foundational truth of monotheism. There's only one God. The Trinity doesn't introduce multiple gods. Rather, it reveals the richness and complexity of the one true God. Muslim debater. These verses underscore the Islamic emphasis on Tawhid, the absolute oneness of God, just as water can exist in three states, liquid ice and vapour, yet remain essentially water, so too does God exist as three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, yet remain one God. Introducing any concept of plurality within God's essence compromises this fundamental tenet of Islam. Philippians 2.6.7 presents a passage ripe for interpretation. Jesus, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. He made himself nothing, veiling his divine glory and taking on human flesh. This act of humility doesn't diminish his divinity, but highlights his humanity. In Mark 13, 32, Jesus states, But about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. This self-imposed limitation reveals his willingness to experience human limitations fully. Omniscience, the ability to know all things, is an essential attribute of God. This act of humility doesn't diminish his divinity, but highlights his willingness to fully experience humanity. Matthew 3, 16-17 describes Jesus' baptism where the Holy Spirit descends like a dove and a voice from heaven proclaims, This is my Son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Christian debater. This event offers a powerful visual representation of the Trinity in action. The Father speaks from heaven, affirming Jesus as his beloved Son. The Son, willingly submitting to baptism, identifies with humanity, and the Holy Spirit descends, signifying God's empowering presence. Muslim debater. While we acknowledge the significance of Jesus' baptism, interpreting this event as evidence for the Trinity requires imposing a theological framework not explicitly present in the text itself. This isn't a portrayal of three separate gods, but one God revealed in three distinct persons working in perfect harmony. Colossians 2.9 declares, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Christian debater, this verse stands as a resounding affirmation of Jesus' divine nature. The fullness of deity dwelling within him signifies that Jesus isn't a lesser God or a created being, but fully God, possessing all the attributes and essence of God the Father. Muslim debater, while we acknowledge the exalted status of Jesus, interpreting fullness of deity as implying ontological equality with God contradicts the Islamic understanding of God's absolute oneness and uniqueness. Imagine a vessel filled to the brim with pure, sparkling water. There's no separation, no dilution. The fullness of the water is contained within the vessel. Similarly, the fullness of God dwelt within Jesus. This understanding aligns with the Islamic belief that God is the sole, eternal and uncreated being. In John 17, verse 3, Jesus prays, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This prayer reveals the depth of his relationship with the Father and his mission to humanity. Jesus emphasizes the Father's unique role as the source and sender within the Trinity. Think of a master craftsman and his apprentice. The apprentice acknowledges the master's superior knowledge and experience. Similarly, Jesus acknowledges the Father's role as the one who sent him. The Great Commission in Matthew 28, verse 19, commands believers to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Christian debater, it's a profound statement about the nature of God and our relationship with him. The singular name reveals the distinct yet unified nature of God. Muslim debater. Interpreting this verse as proof of the Trinity imposes a theological framework not explicitly present. Colossians 1 verse 15 refers to Jesus as the firstborn of all creation. Christian debater, the term firstborn in this context doesn't imply that Jesus was created, but rather signifies his preeminence and authority over all creation. Just as a firstborn son in ancient cultures held a position of honor and inheritance, so too does Jesus hold a unique position as the son of God. 
Muslim debater, the term firstborn suggests a temporal beginning, implying that Jesus was created, albeit as the first and most exalted of God's creations. Imagine a king commissioning a grand palace. The palace, while impressive, remains a creation of the king, reflecting his power and majesty. Similarly, creation, while vast and wondrous, remains a testament to Christ, the divine architect. This understanding aligns with the Islamic belief that God is the sole, eternal and uncreated being. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 describes Jesus as the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. As the radiance of God's glory, he reveals the Father's splendor and majesty. And as the exact representation of his being, he perfectly reflects the Father's character and essence. Jesus, as the exact representation of God, reveals the Father's true nature to humanity. One of the most heart-wrenching moments in the Gospels occurs when Jesus, hanging on the cross, cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27, verse 46. This cry reveals the depth of his humanity and the weight of our sin. Jesus experienced the full brunt of human anguish, including separation from God. This cry is difficult to reconcile with the concept of a divine being. God, being self-sufficient, cannot experience abandonment or despair. The Father allowed Jesus to experience human suffering for our redemption. This aligns with the Islamic belief in Jesus as a human prophet subject to mortality. In John chapter 20, verse 28, Thomas, initially skeptical, exclaims, My Lord and my God, upon seeing the risen Christ. Thomas's exclamation stands as a powerful testament to the early church's recognition of Jesus' divinity. Interpreting it as definitive proof of Jesus' divinity requires a theological framework. Thomas recognized not just a teacher, but his Lord and his God. In Mark chapter 2, Jesus forgives the sins of a paralyzed man, a power traditionally reserved for God alone. Jesus' authority to forgive sins flows from his divine nature. He demonstrates power over nature, sickness and death, all attributes of God. We believe God can delegate his authority to chosen individuals, like prophets. In Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, Jesus declares, I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and now I am alive forevermore. This powerful declaration from the risen Christ echoes the divine name, I am, revealed to Moses. Jesus identifies himself as the eternal God. Interpreting the first and the last as a claim to divinity contradicts the Islamic understanding of God's absolute oneness. As our exploration of this profound theological debate draws to a close, we're left with a deeper appreciation for the complexities and nuances surrounding the nature of Jesus Christ. We've witnessed the Christian perspective rooted in the belief in Jesus' divinity as affirmed through scriptural interpretations, theological understanding of the Trinity and accounts of his life, death and resurrection. Conversely, we've engaged with the Muslim perspective grounded in the absolute oneness of God or Tawhid, revering Jesus as a prophet and messenger, interpreting scriptural passages through the lens of strict monotheism. Both perspectives offer compelling arguments, rooted in deep faith and centuries of tradition. For Christians worldwide, the belief in Jesus as God, the second person of the Trinity, stands as the cornerstone of faith. His teachings, miracles, death and resurrection reveal a love so profound, a sacrifice so complete, that it could only flow from a divine source. His words, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John chapter 14 verse 6, resonate with the conviction that Jesus alone offers the path to salvation and reconciliation with God. The Christian faith hinges on the belief that Jesus in his divine nature bridged the chasm between humanity and God, offering forgiveness, hope, and eternal life. The scriptural evidence coupled with the transformative power of his teachings compels us to embrace Jesus as both Lord and God. The Islamic faith stands firmly on the foundation of Tawheed, the absolute oneness of God. This principle, woven throughout the Quran, leaves no room for any form of plurality within God's essence. 
Attributing divinity to Jesus compromises the purity of monotheism. The Islamic faith emphasizes submitting to the will of the one true God, Allah.